Okay, so this is part three of setting up this Motion Graphics logo open, and I cannot stress enough how important uh, the setup of the motion design features in Unreal 5.4 are. So if you're experienced with Unreal and you don't want to watch me setting up the project options and uh, plugins and such, go ahead and skip to like three minutes into this video because that's where the really important part happens. Motion design features in Unreal 5.4 are different than just about any other new feature set that I've ever seen. So uh, definitely go ahead and check that out. If you're newer and you want to see how the plugins get activated and some of the project settings, uh, stick around it and we'll get into that first. Okay, so let's get to work with this uh, motion design. So I will go back to my brand new project here. And first let's take care of some project settings. We will go to the project settings. So edit menu project settings. And a couple things I just want to change so um, things are clean when we do a restart here as I want to use my new map as my default map. So my editor startup map is going to be this MD map. So that should be in here somewhere. There we are. And I want to also make sure we're making use of our alpha channel. So if I type in alpha entering and enable alpha channel support for post-processing, uh, we do want that to be linear color space. So uh, if we're ever going to render directly out of this uh, with alpha channel, what we want this active. So it's a good habit to uh, set that on. Okay, now I can go ahead and activate some plugins, which is going to trigger a restart. And so we'll go to plugins. And of course, motion design is one of the ones that we want to do. And that's this one right here. And so, yeah, it's experimental, save often. Uh, and of course, we're on a preview of a, an experimental feature. So, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that. Uh, also, Storm Sync. We, we're going to want that because that is a super handy plugin. So, I'm just typing in Storm so I get both of those plugins. Also, experimental. So, we also get those messages. And I've got those active. So, that's everything I'm going to need for this little project. So, we'll go ahead and restart and be right back. Okay, we're back. So we'll go ahead and uh, close the plugins and um, any streaming pool error. Um, I always forget it. I have to go down to the command console here. And I think it's, uh, you know, if I just type in stream and pool, I should be able to, yeah, there it is. Streaming pool size, right? And so if I hit enter, uh, I can look at my output log and I can see it's set to a thousand. So let's go ahead and just double that. So, uh, Streaming pool size and space 2000. And there we go. So that our error is gone there. Okay. So uh, we want to activate motion design. So we can see that we've got our button for this here. Um, really important note. Always, 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 always use this button to um, activate motion design. So if I click away from my console here, uh, here's the point. You can go into the selection mode, well, the selection mode, this, these are the different modes that are available in the engine and motion design is in there and we can select that and we get some of the toolkit. But uh, one thing I'm going to point out is that not all the windows opened up and there's a lot going on here. It's actually fundamentally changing the structure of the level. So um, you notice that, you know, going into the motion design mode, nothing happened to the level. It's not an asterisk. It hasn't been altered in any way. I'm going to go to selection mode back to where we started. I'm going to hit this button here to activate motion design mode. And uh, this will take a split second. And now we've got a new sequencer window. We've got new tools. We've got uh, a motion design outliner. There's an operator stack. So quite a few things opened up here. And really important, if I go back to the content browser, notice that there's an asterisk now on my level. This level has been altered. So I want to do a save all because uh, the motion design plugin just added stuff to the uh, level. And one of those things, incidentally, is the sequencer has a sequence. And the sequence, this isn't an asset. You will not find this sequence in your uh, content browser at all. This is actually embedded within the level itself. It's actually a critical aspect of some of the motion graphics tools that we'll be getting into later in terms of the fact that this is a special kind of sequence. It actually supports multiple different animations in the single sequence. And it's for supporting 
uh, the, the motion graphics, the uh, lower thirds types of graphics where the banner at the bottom of a screen might change size over the course of a broadcast, reveal new information, hide new, old information. And all of those transitions are supported through the structural changes in the, the level asset as well as this uh, special built-in sequence that's now stored within the level rather than as an independent asset. And, and so it's these things that we want to leverage and make sure that we use this button here to uh, enter and exit out of motion design mode. So I'm now in motion design mode. and it, doesn't prevent me from moving into other modes such as selection and modeling and all of that sort of thing. In fact, we'll be using modeling in just a bit, but I really needed to underscore that this is the button you need to hit to activate the features of the plugin. It's not simply activating the plugin itself. Uh, it's not going into the mode. It's, it's this button. Uh, so make sure you use that. Okay. Uh, more to come in the next video. Until next time, have fun.